and welcome back. It's Talking Books episode. Um, well, the first one was a trial, so that was zero. Then it was Morrison, so he was one. He's number two. I have to be careful the way I did that. And look, I'm joined by Gorgeousness Personified. <laughs> you may have already seen who it is from the title of the video, but it's the lovely Lisa Bowerman, everybody. Hello, hello, Checks in the Post. Thanks very much Sorry, indeed. And Sorry, thank you for inviting me to have this little matter. Yeah. Oh, thank you for joining us at Labrick Audio HQ. Oh. So glamorous. It's been lovely. Actually, we've just had a couple of days recording some stuff for uh, Big Finish. We have. So that's been really good. A couple of audiobook uh, bits and pieces. So that's been a lot of fun. Uh, we just finished. And before I thought, before she gets out the door and runs off home, uh, I, I grab you by uh, by the audiobook bits and, <laughs> and talk books, audiobooks with Let's you. Let's talk about them. So um, you're a bit of an everything, every person, aren't you? you yeah, jack direct. of all trades, I think they call it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so Jane of all trades. Oh, very good. <laughs> you direct, you produce you write you certainly narrate well and... I'm going to delete a couple from oh, that oh, list okay. um, I, I've never actually properly produced I certainly direct okay. and I certainly act and the one thing that I, I will know my limitations about is writing I, I'm not a writer I I think I know <laughs> I think I recognize a good script when I see one and okay. um, when it comes to directing uh, certainly in the stuff that I've done in the past whether mm. it be audiobook or indeed audio drama yeah. uh, by the time I've received the script uh, most of the editing process would have been gone through okay. so uh, seriously from my point of view on the day uh, especially with, with other actors uh, it may be just a case of, um, you know, rearranging the syntax, whether it be... The, the directorial fine-tuning. Yes, it is. I mean, it's yeah. putting a comma in there. Yeah. It's yeah. swapping a, a word there. Okay. Um, I, I'm a bit hot on anachronisms. So if I'm <laughs> doing something that's a, that's a sort of, you know, period drama, I might take the OK out, you know, that oh, sort of thing. Oh, gosh, yeah. No. Although, strangely, with OK, it's been in common parlance much earlier it than has. you think. There's quite a few of them that have, and you have to relearn almost what you think's an anachronism that isn't. Well, it's interesting because... Because it, it might be around, but it might not be in common parlance. So or not uh, by the person, the sort of person yes, who's saying it. Exactly. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. We have that a lot when we do, particularly American written Regency romance novels, yeah. oh, and gosh. they think the Brits speak a certain way, yeah. and you kind of think, no, no, mm. no, you wouldn't have said that. <laughs> you can't change it, but it's fun. It's interesting. I mean, we don't want to go off on a tangent, but that's what this is about. Uh, of course, this is a tangent. <laughs> because uh, in the same respect with the American thing, of course, people talk about gotten. I gotten this, and I gotten oh, that. Yeah. But but actually, but no, prop, a, that was the original yes. grammatically correct way of saying Absolutely. it way back. It's actually, it was very much the British way, and then it went transatlantic, and we stopped saying it as a yes. response to the Americans sure. using it. I'm not quite sure when that happened. Well, Mark Gatiss was here. I must get his name right. Gatiss. <laughs> Gatiss. <laughs> and we actually chatted about this, because it was one of his bugbears in the script we were yeah. doing. It was like, got an, oh, and I had to kind of yeah. help, help sort of easing through it but we got chatting and he knows the history of it I think he said it was like the 30s or the 20s oh, it's or something as late as that. Um, but we weren't quite sure yeah. and now obviously it's come back into modern usage uh, through social networking and yeah I mean and mass purely media. because exactly mass yeah. media I mean everything's so transatlantic I, I, I'm I'm horribly old-fashioned I did a, <laughs> a, a, a an audio book uh, I think it was last year it didn't come out that long ago and I have a real thing about saying harassed as opposed to oh, harassed. Yes, now, I never know which way it is. Well, uh, my theory is that it was actually popularised, uh, harassed was popularised in this country by mm. Frank Spencer, the character Frank Spencer, oh. in some others do have him. He says, I'm not being harassed, yeah, so you know, harassed. Betty. And um, oh, yeah. it is actually the American way of saying it, but I, I, I am a fervent harasser. Mm as opposed to harass. And, and I did see a, a comment online saying, the only thing wrong with this is she said, harassed. What is Aww. she saying? And I'm going, oh, I'm standing up for my... Now, for years ago, before I got onto this side of the world, um, I used to be, believe it or not, a traffic and travel presenter on local radio. <laughs> yeah, the things you do to earn cash. I love it. And every day I'd get a complaint normally from the same people, saying that I said debris instead of debris. Debris. And debris. for some reason, I'd only ever heard it as debris. And it yes. sounds fine to me saying debris. And to this day, I have to think, if I see yeah. the word, well, it's debris. Like, it's like default and default. Yes. People say yeah. a default drive, and somebody goes, oh, it's default. You know, <laughs> yeah, and, and don't get into data or data or data. Or data. Uh, my, 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 my recent bugbear, and it has become completely ubiquitous, is uh, research. And research. Oh, and research. Research. I'm a research ah, person. Well, a we've research had one in your book today, which I didn't mention because I know it's fine, but it drives me mad. Yeah. What do you call this part of the body? Forehead. No, it's a forehead. forehead. No, forehead. <laughs> forehead is American. Forehead is English. 
I dispute, but we'll open it up to the comments. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh -oh. But even if it's right, which if sure it is, I hate the sound of it. Oh, it sounds it. wrong. I have fun. For it, it sounds like you've not bothered to say the word correctly. But it is a sort of, you see a lot of these very, very old novels, and they'll put little, uh, oh. um, you know, like a four, yes. you know, and they'll put a little. Yes. Um, uh, Colon. Not colon. Oh, um, 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 I know what you mean. Look at us. We're professionals. Oh, God, Darwin, it's been a Darwin, long what are we meant day. to be saying? You, no, uh, we're, we're meant to be saying apostrophe. That's what we're meant oh, to be saying. Oh, That's yeah. the one. <laughs> Terrible. Anyway, see the things that, that, that we have to deal with when I we're know. on this side of the microphone. I know. But now, hopefully you'll know this about Lisa, but um, uh, other than being a superb actress, who you might have seen in film and, um, and theatre and so forth, um, you are kind of, to me, one of my heroes of, of audio drama directing. And it's a, it's a, you know, we've not gone into this yet on the show. Uh, we have mentioned it, and obviously it's a, it's a growing part of our market now. Now that's that, amazing. Um, I mean, it used to just be the BBC who made radio drama, mm. uh, and the occasional private person. And then Big Finish came along, and they started the Doctor Who stuff, and that's now expanded into tons of other fields and and, and storylines and non Who based stuff. And of course now Audible as well are now very much getting on the original content drama. It thing. is Isn't it exciting. Amazing. And from our point of view, both Work. of us, it's it's yes. it's fantastic. I think I heard something along the lines, and I might be completely wrong, the statistic is that it's grown sixty-five percent. Wow literally in the last yeah. year, two years, 18 months, whatever. I, I can believe and, that. And yeah. uh, what amazes me, uh, especially, I mean, in a sense, in this country, we, we are used to radio drama. The traditions yes. of Radio 4 go yes. back decades and decades. And um, interestingly, as far as Big Finish is concerned, um, there is a big following in America. Mm. Now, initially, there was a little, a little reluctance uh, I did a series, an American series. I did, I did um, a couple of the, I directed a couple of the full casts of, of Stargate. Oh, and, yes, I remember that. Um, interestingly, there was a huge backlash from the fans really? because they thought it was a replacement for making coming back and making it again. Oh, it never was. It, it was never going to happen. In a way, getting in the happen. way of winning yeah, a new commission. Exactly. But it was the original cast. But uh, yeah, the, the vast majority of yeah. it was. Uh, some of it was recorded over in America and then I brought, uh, for the full cast ones, I brought the rest of the cast together wow. um, over here. And... Um, <laughs> interestingly, sadly, we um, Big Finish don't have the license anymore, but interestingly, um, there, there was a reluctance because they just had an, a lot of the listeners mm. who, of course, don't really, if they followed the television programme, they weren't saturated in the kind of um, audio drama that no, we are over no, here. No, it's not a traditional And their medium. expectation was that it's just going to be a bunch of actors reading yeah. in front of yeah. a it's microphone. A spoken, it's, a word, it's a talking book, in essence. And of course, with post-production, with digital post-production these wow, days, yeah. you know, we all know, yeah. and so the editors uh, who do, the sound designers who do, do the post production on all these productions, whether it be Big Finish or yours. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. you're you're a great you know editor as well. Is oh, that nice. yeah, very good? Uh, <laughs> is is that it is like film without the pictures? Yes. Well, as, as you the, have everything. It is many layers without absolutely. the filming. As the mighty you know. Mags has been describing it forever. You know, these are audio movies. They are, and they are literally. If you can, if you can't imagine what we're talking about, I know obviously the people watching this can. But a good way of thinking about it, if you're talking to friends about what is what I find when I try to describe what. A sound designer does oh. is watch a movie now close your eyes everything you're now hearing and experiencing everything is what sound designers and composers do and that is audio drama yeah, it's it just is. it's movie without the visual mm. and it's an amazing art form and it's something i've been very proud really to do is. and it's something i'm very proud to watch my friends like yourself do so well and to keep bringing talent through it's one of those places where new writers get opportunities, new performers Absolutely. get opportunities, but also you can place the most famous actor against the newest up and comer. That's exactly and watch it. the joy of them learning yes. and growing together. It is. I mean, it, it's interesting when it comes to radio drama at drama schools. I, um, the, the vast majority of established drama schools will have uh, some sort of radio technique or radio yeah. teaching. But recently, and I, I won't name names, there is a London <laughs> drama school that's very well known yeah. and very well respected. And uh, a couple of years ago, I think I, I met their uh, radio drama uh, teacher at that point, and she said, um, I have to explain, there's, a, there's an award for drama students called the Carlton Hobbs Award, hmm. which is a radio drama award, and as a the prize, the prize winners have, I think it's a, either a three-month or a six-month contract right, yeah. with BBC Radio Rep, which is the drama rep that the BBC Radio have. And she said, oh, um, the school is withdrawing from the Carlton Hobbs no. Award. And I went, well, and I have since found out that they have stopped teaching 
radio wow. audio radio stroke audio yeah. drama i think it's the biggest mistake they can have with a with a Crazy. market that is growing yeah. now you could argue that there's not a lot to learn especially with uh, but i there there really is because there are well, little things that you need there to is learn there's certainly the argument for at least a one day awareness course oh, absolutely. so how to come into studio what to be prepared for now yeah. i find this with audio books um which is a, occasionally someone will turn up and we have not been told they've never read an audiobook before mm. now i don't blame them themselves they're not the ones in charge of their bookings but they turn up and they'll say so wh wh what do we do and you go well you prepped the book haven't you well, what do you mean prep the book <gasps> well you've read the book You're joking. well i look through it yeah but you've got your character notes and you and we have to start from scratch. <gasps> and Blimey. sometimes you're lucky, they're a great natural reader and you mm -hmm. can kind of bumble your way through it. Other times people have to be let go because mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't finish the book in time. I, I, and I think with audio drama, what mm -hmm. drama schools should be doing, and I know our, 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 our mutual friend Scott Hancock is yes. one, who, one oh, of many at, who at do Welsh this College, down at Welsh works, College, yeah. to just go in, even if it's just for one day, mm -hmm. and explain what would be expected of you, what you should do in advance, what it's going to be like. Obviously mm -hmm. every studio is going to be different. So yeah. if you go to, say, the moat in West London, everyone has a separate booth. If you go to Soundhouse, most people are going to be in one big room, mm -hmm. and there's going be a bit of a we are the worlding with your with your headphones and other studios will work different ways but you can be prepped to at least know what to ask exactly and uh, yeah be prepared for different studios different yeah. times but um what i found with a lot of uh quite young actors who, who don't have audio experiences because there's a microphone there and as we know um, it's a ubiquitous argument about people on television mumbling <laughs> they think it has to be a very close yeah. under energized yeah. performance and i always say that radio is far more akin to stage Absolutely. than it is you need that yeah. energy, you need that yeah. vocal energy, you need the physical energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you do move around, you do yeah. physicalize. But you have your to movements. know how to do it without making too much noise oh, at the things. same time and, <laughs> and not, not thumping getting in each other's space. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, and that sort of thing that I say, even just a one day awareness course would be invaluable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but also, it might give you the bug. You might go, oh, actually, that's a thing I'd never thought. Yeah. I found, again, with audiobooks, I discussed with quite a few drama schools over the last few years, just to say to their students, are you aware that? probably a good first job as opposed to just waitressing or something would be audiobooks. Now actually someone mm. just did an article about this on online or was it in the Times or somewhere mm. literally saying young actors should consider audiobooks mm. as their first job. Yeah. Now it is tough because a lot of audiobooks require and audio drama require experience mm. and a certain tone of voice or age but there is a lot of younger voiced work that's mm. required and I don't mind having someone new to it as long as they're prepared and enthused and, and the same with drama another thing interestingly and I, I and I go I don't know whether it's because I'm just a, a old and cynical um, <laughs> but as an actor my job as an actor mm. is to pretend to be different people Absolutely. when it comes to vocal range um, you approach each character in a slightly different way. Now, yeah. it can be very broadly drawn or you can make it more subtle. But a lot of young actors are very scared to go away from themselves. They, in Got some yeah. way, think it's acting. And everybody goes into auditions yeah. now and they go, no, no acting. And what does that actually mean? So the process of creating a character, something, especially if the script is good, sometimes characters just leap off the page. Absolutely. Their rhythm, yeah. uh, whether they have an accent yeah. or not, their tone of voice. And, and you can vary it in very subtle ways without doing the sort of audio equivalent of nose party in a funny walk. You yeah, know, no, it's... it's yeah. and, and it's that sort of experience that gives you the latitude to do something that might be closer to yeah, yourself, but absolutely. but also you're there, and, and this, this I'm very passionate about. The bottom line is you're there to serve the writing. You are there to serve the story, yeah. and that carries yeah. from the directing to the sound design to, yeah. to just the process of the storytelling. As we were saying earlier on, you've just got to make it work. You have That's to. That's what you're there for. I mean, as a director on the day, obviously uh, post-production uh, in... Um, Digital recording is very different. I mean, I, yes. I was brought up with old BBC radio. I used to do a lot. I wasn't on the rep, but I worked at Manchester and at Pebble, mm -hmm. Pebble Mill. That's going oh. back a bit. Uh, the Archer Studio. It's very exciting. Wow. I Never did a scene on that haystack. Yeah. Yes, I did. Oh. The hay bale. So when they the actually had room. the sheep in the studio oh, yeah. and everything. Oh, well, I'm not quite sure about that. I never did the archers. My brother did. <laughs> we'll have to ring up I Andy didn't. Jordan. Hi, Andy, out there, <laughs> who used to do the archers. He's an amazing uh, drama director, but also teaches oh, as yeah. well. So there's a, I mean, teaching it is a whole other it's bag really of 
Always, it really is. I mean, yeah. but in those days, of course, it was one microphone in the centre, and it was Absolutely. much more choreographed. Yeah. Um, it's very sweet. Occasionally, I'll, I'll, you know, book somebody for one of the do uh, the Doctor Who ones or the Big Finish ones, and somebody said uh, they come in and they go, "I've brought my hard bottom shoes," Aww. and you think. It doesn't I work actually like had that. someone a few months ago say to me uh, for another production, so um, when are you posting me the onion paper script? Oh, yes, the yeah. very, It yes. had different words for it, but we knew them as onion oh, paper. I and and it was one. this very, very thin, fluffy. sort of fluffy paper, which basically made no noise when you turned the page. Yeah, everybody's always turning and away. So, like yeah, <laughs> and everyone had been trained to do this. You hold your script away, and then you turn away from the mic. And That's you, right. So you hold it from the corner. and you. But because it had this kind of slightly fluffiness to it, yeah. uh, it wouldn't make a kind of... No, it wasn't, sh yeah, it wasn't it like could, that it could, but photocopying it was, but, paper. But it cost it? a fortune. Yeah, I bet it I did. remember years ago, we were doing Don Carlos Radio 3, and there had 20 members of the cast, plus the producer, director. Everyone wanted onion paper scripts. So I spent like a thousand pounds printing up these scripts. And then everyone turned up with their own or normal paper and said, that's fine, we'll just work with those. I mean, obviously, <laughs> this is another thing you get used to because um, But everyone's, digital. of course, on, on iPad now. Well, yeah, iPad or, in fact, I mean, again, at Big Finish, because we're all in on separate booths, everybody's on a separate track. Um, we have uh, music stands. And oh, okay. most, uh, I think, the, the writing requirements that have been uh, asked for over the years, or that doesn't always happen, is that most scenes are three pages long. And if it's anything uh, more, I normally say three on the stand, one in the hand, you know, yes, that sort yes, of thing. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, which means, uh, and another thing uh, with digital recording is that you stay on mic for everything. Yes. In the old days, you yeah. used to kind of walk off the mic and or go do, into the do, distance. Or do what we call the diagonal uh, shift. Yeah, exactly. So when you're not breathing on the mic. <laughs> the strangest one, I used to work for a, a company called Independent Radio Drama Productions, which worked out of LBC. And we actually recorded in a tiny newsroom mm -hmm. at LBC. And it was real DIY sound effects. Yeah, and yeah, of course, yeah. the, the wall of the studio was probably about there. So you'd have to think, oh, what's the point? It was all a bit camp. Really. There are studios yeah. we know that still do that. Oh, really? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, interestingly, uh, the very first time I worked uh, with post-production right. was on the very first. Uh, th there's a series I do called Bernie Summerfield, The Adventures of Bernie Summerfield, which was the very first project mm. that Big Finish did, uh, which is now officially 20 years well, old. Well, we were going to celebrate that in a moment. Oh, so more on that okay, in a well, second. Work on Stay that. tuned. But, uh, of course, I had worked at BBC uh, Radio. I was you know, used to the spot effects person standing by you buttering your <laughs> toast in time with your lines. Small doors going uh, slam. Uh, so strange when something, it was toast. And then there was a sewing machine. Again, they were doing it in time with the dialogue, which oh, is very disconcerting. Amazing, and There's a lost art form. It really is. I mean, there yeah. are still Foley guys around. You know, oh, no, Foley, Spotify, but, but live Spot oh, yeah. is so rarely required. And those, the Beeb do do the occasional yes, live theatre type recording. Do, yeah. And going back to our Lord and Master Dirk, who, you know, when he does his live oh, hitchhikers type shows, you know, he has done. the full thing yeah. with, I think Philip Pope helps him out. Oh, with he's it. brilliant. And amazing. the pair of them are just A, geniuses, <laughs> B, great musicians, yeah. and brilliant Spot effect <laughs> artists. They're fantastic. And it is so much fun to watch someone doing live The last time I experienced that uh, I was actually involved with a live performance of a lost Dick Barton special agent script oh, yes. uh, with Tim Benting, Tim who Benting. plays, and yes. uh, Paul Charles, who, who is uh, producing it, not only had CD effects, but also but live. had live spot effects. And Joyous. you saw him dashing around going, which, 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 which one was it? It's, See, the now pressure was the, on. The art of spot effects is not making noise yourself. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but uh, the very first day I turned up uh, for Bernie Summerfield was in a very, very moth-eaten, dank, damp cellar in Elephant and Castle with wow. one microphone in the middle. Yeah, that's middle. not there anymore. And uh, I'm not sure it isn't. And um, uh, the very first editor was... Uh, Alistair Locke oh, and he well, was sitting yeah. in the corner with the DAT machine a little digital oh, tape machine and I thought this, this is going to machines. sound rubbish yeah. and the genius of post-production and Alistair was is a very very good editor I, I got them back thinking it was going to sound somebody yeah. li li like somebody with a Casio recorder in the front room, you know. Uh, regardless of the fact, it was a very smart cast. I mean, we had Nick, oh, yeah. uh, Nick Courtney playing yeah. my cat. Uh, Mark Gatiss, just off the back of a very a new series. And I said, so remind me, what's, th what's this series called? I've got to look out for you on television. It's called The League of Gentlemen. Didn't go anywhere. Didn't it was pity, such a flop. really. Yeah, no, that boy, such, he needs some luck. Such potential. <laughs> but where well, did it well go? interesting, because you say about that, it's... Um, 
I saw some photos a year or two ago of um, uh, Strangers in Space, which was a series that that, uh, Sophie Sophie and Trevor and Simon were produced by Claire Eden. Um, And there's some photos of where they've been recording in various, they look like, forgive me if I'm wrong, guys, but it looked like kind of front rooms or or, um, (laughs) not necessarily, you know, you'd expect kind of fully fledged sound proof studio spaces. I mean, you can do it anywhere. And the the sound they got from that, because the equipment's great, they prepped the room, the actors all knew how to work off exactly. mics in such a space, but also yeah. the post in digital can be done so well. Amazing. You can still make mistakes, of course, sure. and both of us as directors, and you much more as a director mm-hmm. than I, have to deal with that kind of I mean, problem. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it depends. And a lot of uh, sound designers, sound editors like yourself, you know, if you come across something that, that hasn't quite been recorded either just off mic or is yeah. is in a slightly different space there are so many strange plugins you can put in <laughs> now that you know and it's like um i get a lot of you know, we get a lot of um voice reels from actors yes. and uh one of, my, one of my pet hates only because i used to do it myself and it was absolutely thwacked out of me at drama <laughs> school was a sibilant s and everybody okay. goes, oh, I'll just put that through a de And I go, what's a de And it just gets rid of... Sub- I th- it can work great, but like all these things, if you overuse them in the wrong way, they're oh, just, it they, they very destructive. Oh, really? That's yeah, interesting. It's an interesting one. But I do have, I do have a pet hate. Guys, if you have a sibilant S, <laughs> work at it. It's much easier. <laughs> How do you work on the sibilant S? You, you put your tongue further back behind your teeth because it means the tongue's too far forward. Really? Just, so you've yeah, learned something. You know, every Free. day's a school day. <laughs> learn these Theoretically. So you mentioned Bernie Summerfield. Yeah. Um, you are Bernie Summerfield. Yeah. Um, now, Bernie Summerfield is now 20 years old. Well, Congratulations. Technically, she's not 20 years no, old. No, she's the, not 20 the, years old. Yeah, well, okay, technically... Uh, 92, when? yes, so that's... Uh, wow, a lot longer then, yeah, so 26. 26. 26. So that's when Paul, Paul Cornell. Cornell wrote the first... Was it a book or a short yes, story? Yes, no, or? it was a book. Um, Bernie, to, to cut an extremely long story short, Bernie Summerfield was a character, a new companion, created for the seventh Doctor, who is Sylvester oh, McCoy, in course. the New Adventure novels, which Virgin, which were, which Virgin published. Publishing yeah, used to very do. Very famously, just slightly odd. Yes, just, well, slightly more adult in nature, yeah. I think they said. And it, um, they were released just after the main series had finished completely right. uh, on the BBC, yeah. which ironically I was also involved with. And um, Yes, yes actually, I did. No, I did. Shall we, well, yes. There is a great adventure, <laughs> which actually we now, we did the audio book. Oh, of. yes, we did. Yes, we did. So you I got to reprise that. yourself and you were a cat warrior Ooh, woman oh get it right i was cara head of the cheetah people cheetah people and the, the makeup people. effect oh, was God. brilliant for the time <laughs> no for the time but you got to do horse riding yeah, and warrior yeah. womaning yeah and, and and got killed by the master what more can a girl and want? you had the master in yeah. it and sophie sophie and sylv yeah. so it was a great it, time it was technically the last episode that went out although That's it wasn't right. the one last one that was filmed yes. um but anyway in this interim time where everybody thought doctor who would be seen it, no gone. more yeah. um the virgin new adventure had started up and were was very popular yeah. with people who liked science fiction who liked Doctor Who it had a slightly more adult tone so during the course of this time they created new characters right. one of whom was Bernie Professor Bernie Surprise Summerfield a 26th century archaeologist no, I know you've heard that phrase before is somewhere. It, but, is this, uh, no, we won't ask. No, we won't ask. But anyway, we she was the first. And she also predated Lara Croft. So just for the record. So no, uh, I'm not saying that there's a fight I'd like to see. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Maybe the newer, the newer Lara. That's Lovely right. Alicia Vikander. Oh. A, oh, she's very good. See, that would be a great meet up. She's it? really good. Come on. I could play a mother, perhaps. Perhaps <laughs> a grandmother. Who knows? She anyway. could be Bernice's granddaughter maybe well no we see we, oh no we're going to no, no, diverge now because off. i've we've already cast somebody who's bloody young <laughs> bernice and she's very good so there we go oh. i know spoiler um but anyway uh so in the intervening years uh three chaps one named gary russell one mm-hmm. named nicholas briggs one named jason Hig ellery all troublemakers all troublemakers don't get anywhere near oh. them Ooh. um they created a company i think at that stage it was called audio visuals yeah and i think they'd done basically some original drama on video uh, mm-hmm. that involved doctor who actors because they knew there was still a market yeah. amongst yeah. fans for that That's kind right. of thing so cut to 1998 and they had decided to try and find something that was Doctor Who related because, of course, oh, they didn't have the right. license yeah. from the BBC to do proper Doctor Who. Mm. And um, 
So they searched around and they landed on Professor Bernie Summerfield. Oh. I happen to know uh, Mike Tucker, who was the special effects designer on Survival yep. when I did it. He also wrote for New Adventures. He knew oh. Gary Russell, a friend of Gary Russell, had suggested world, that perhaps I might be right for Bernie Summerfield oh, because wow. I'd done radio drama before. Mm -hmm. And um, um, Gary had met me on a, <laughs> a video <laughs> called I Was a Doctor Who Monster. Oh, so anyway, uh, cut to the chase. Uh, Mike Tucker said, would you be interested in playing this character? Explained mm. it. I thought, all right. And couple there of, you were. couple of fanboys in the front room with a Casio yeah. recorder. Did they, did, did they pay? We well, see, first of all, I had to audition. Suddenly it was like, you have what? to audition. I went, what? So I went it to It started Nick. as they meant to be, go on. I went to Nick Briggs' front room, <laughs> and this is very well documented, but I went to Nick Briggs' front room, and he had a microphone strapped to, he now says a broomstick. I remember an uplighter, but or anyway. like a fake boom. Yes, whatever it was, it wasn't very encouraging. <laughs> so uh, oh, I, I also that. had a, a very good script. It was an adaptation. What they'd got, is the permission to adapt the Doctor Who New Adventures without the Doctor in. Oh, so Jack Rayner, brilliant writer Jack Rayner, had clever. adapted a, a completely insane script called Oh No It Isn't about being taken over by the by the spirit of pantomime. It's all right, it's a long story. But anyway, uh, <laughs> they'd adapted this to called Oh No It Isn't. I read it, I got the gig, wow. I went to the, the, the cellar in 1998 yeah. I did three or four audios. I thought, that's the end of it. And then a year later, well, it's interesting because I got them back thinking they're going to sound rubbish. And of course, I suddenly sound this, as they we were, were saying, amazing. move yeah. even at that stage. Yeah. And it was still quite early on in digital recordings history. Absolutely. You know, They sounded amazing. Yeah. BBC heard them, said, you can apply for the license. They got it. Oh, that's their holy grail. Amazing. I thought that's the end of Bernie Summerfield. But dear old Gary Russell said, Keep her on. Keep her going. And 20, 20 years. years. It's 20 years, everybody. And <gasps> the adventures are still as mad as that first one sounds, um, oh, as well, we they, can they, attest from today's short stories. Yeah, no, um, well, they, yes, they play with form. I but they have a lot say. of interesting themes. and. She's a great character. Yeah. I mean, she, she is... She is a completely normal, fallible human being. She has, she's not a superhero. She doesn't go around smashing people in the face unless she needs to. And she's quite funny. But the, the, the good thing about her, apart from the fact that hopefully you like, you know, hanging out with a character for you know, an hour or so, is that um, she, she appeals to everybody. Mm. And the great thing is, is that she can flip on a sixpence. It can yes. be high comedy and it can yeah. be really, really heavy very, stuff. Very dramatic tragedy going yeah, on. Yeah, there's uh, we did one called Just War, which was based on mm. um, Guernsey under the Nazi occupation right. by Lance Parkin. It was, it was an adaptation of yeah. a new a new adventure. And it was extraordinary. Yeah. But so, and getting back to kind of the, the technical side of yeah. what, what we do. So, what I find fascinating is that you you are you're spending this life. <laughs> Jumping between being the director, a very good one, and then being an actor. Now, when you're being uh, Bernice, do you have that urge to do a bit of directing? Oh, I mean, I know none of us as directors want our, our lovely actors to direct them for themselves, no, well, but we yeah. always are happy with input, of course. Mm. You have What's to it like for you? I have to stitch my lip. Really? I have to stay. Yeah. Not always, because I, I've had some great directors. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's not a question years. mark on the directors. It's no, no, just no. the fact that because you, you are at your core yeah. a director, becoming I, yes. the star. I sometimes, I will, def I, I will demur to, if I'm not sure, hmm. I will, and nobody said anything, I'll always say either, can I do that again? Or okay. are you sure that is what you want? Yeah. Um, of course, take, give me notes, give me notes, give yeah, me notes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yes, you do know the character after playing it for that long. <laughs> the only thing, I don't really like to be too dictatorial, certainly in terms of uh, uh, post-production right. or on the yeah. day of the recording. But the only thing I really have, let me see, insisted on in the past is that it's very easy to write a lot of gags for her and a lot of jokes and a lot of flippant oh, okay. speech. And if there's too much, she gets incredibly irritating. Yeah. So on the day of recording, it's really by that time the script would have been sorted out. Of course. We've been incredibly lucky and had some fantastic casts. Oh, yeah. And I get to work with really good <laughs> people. And, you know, it, it's very weird because, you know, I... I 
count myself. I'm a jobbing actor. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not a star. But it's very odd kind of heading up a series for that long that within its little confine and within its little bubble is quite big. Yeah, absolutely. But it is a bubble. So yeah. Yeah. you get these amazing actors going, what is this? Is this Doctor <laughs> Who? Is this not Doctor Who? And who are you? Yeah. And are you how, really how good? Does this you know, yeah, how does yeah, this yeah. work? I mean, it, it, it's a very... I have a very strange life in that on one end of the street I'm signing autographs and the other yeah. end I'm knocking on the door trying to get trying. an agent and an, or, an audition <laughs> and a job and a kind of, hello, you know. Wow. It's very, very it's weird. It's quite complex what, it you're, is. what you're doing. But going back to the directing, I, I actually have directed a couple of the Bernie Summerfields. So you, and you have and literally I, done the direct yourself thing? Well, actually, not so much on that, but I did do, and I was very lucky to do 13 series of an amazing series called Jago and Lightfoot, uh, which such, starred um, uh, Christopher series. Benjamin and the wonderful, and now late, sadly, late lamented Trevor Baxter. And uh, uh, purely through accident, I ended up playing another part in that, which was oh. not like Bernice, oh. but I did have to to direct myself to in that. that. Oh, gotcha. But then I always, always rely on whoever is in the control room. Yeah. So we have the wonderful Toby Robinson who um, looks at uh, and he's, he's everything, everything extraordinaire. He is everything I was about to say engineer extraordinaire, but, no, but he's, he's everything because he's, he's a, a composer, engineer, he's a composer, like editor, and, yeah, a sound cook. designer, <laughs> the most amazing lunches on the planet. You if ever heard. as an actor you're invited to do a big finish and you're kind of thinking, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. And they say to you, it's going to be recorded with Toby at the moat. Just say yes. Just say yes. You will you will not <laughs> be in any way uh, underwhelmed by the food. No. It's astonishing how he does it and do the actual yeah. button pressing. He's, 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 he's a bit of a genius. And of course, he has, he has a huge history within the music Absolutely. industry anyway. And... Um, so you say to, to Toby or to whoever is producing, mm. whether it be, uh, you know, um, David Richardson, yeah. who is the producer of yeah. Jago and Lightfoot, or even, you know, sometimes the, the, the writers, if they're there, just say, is that how you pronounce it? Or was that a bit yeah. fast? Was it yeah. a bit slow? And you really, really rely yeah. on them. Um, but the, the one thing I like about the way that we record uh, digitally, certainly at, at Moat, is that we, we work on cans, we work Good. on headphones. Yeah which is very different from working without it and in a live environment with one microphone. Yes. Yeah. And in a way, I, I like it because you can detach yourself mm. from the actual performance. It's like listening to somebody else. And I find it quite easy to self-police. Yeah, yes, uh, no, and, I think you should be able to. But and also you, you are hear hearing, it. there is, a, as much as we aim with our equipment to, to record as is, mm. there, there is inevitably a change to the voice through the equipment, even if it's just through the amplification of it. And see, I've always stood firm with audiobook studios that you should always read with headphones on, even yeah. if it's just one can, yeah. because you, you should... You, you need to be pulled into what you're doing. And you and are. It is like listening to the radio. I mean, it sounds a bit perverse to say it's like sounding, like listening to, to, to somebody else's voice. Yeah. But it's so close to you. And weirdly, the one thing I can't do, uh, and it's happened a couple of times when I was at drama school, I used to do a few musicals. I used mm. to, you know, I sang a bit. And uh, occasionally I'd be asked to go into recording. I, I can't sing with headphones on. I find it very difficult See, because I can't surprising project. To me. Yeah. I can do it yeah. with one can at a stretch. But singing should be like you're performing Well, yeah, on a you stage. need that vocal you push energy. It out. And in a way, I, I get lost in, in my... Yeah. I can't judge my no, own voice and the amount yeah. of energy. But yeah. vocal, uh, speaking voice, I find it much easier. This comes back to the joy of audio drama, which is what I wanted this episode to be about, uh, which is that you can do all that in audio drama. Yeah. We have now, uh, what, 20 years of big Finish continuity, amazing. where the doctors and the companions have done amazing things. There's full, there's now, if I'm right, there's, uh, there's more Colin Baker adventures oh, in audio than there ever were on telly. Yeah. And of course, and, and for Paul lovely Paul McGann, McGann well, yeah. he's had tons of it. I mean, the uh, it's amazing. The extraordinary thing is, although Big Finish are licensed by the BBC mm. and they have to be approved by Absolutely. the BBC, so there are quite yeah. um, strict guidelines. But uh, funnily enough, I was on a panel at a, a screenwriters festival recently, and, and actually the writers there were saying that sometimes those narrow channels actually can be quite good uh, creatively uh, yes. because yes. it concentrates yeah. your mind. But there's there's a little bit more latitude on audio. I mean, apart from the fact that you, you, your budgets in your brain well, can be translated into some amazing sound well, effects. Yes, yeah, you, you know. can literally 
do anything. I yeah. think I was saying to someone recently, one of the weirdest sound effects I was ever asked to create for a BBC Doctor Who thing years ago was, I think if I remember right, it's a, a space dragon egg imploding with the silence of the universe or something like that. I'm thinking, for a start, you said the word silence, so it doesn't really work in sound. Oh, um, but that, then when you pull back from the panic attack and you go, mm. okay, so... I'll start building this, I'll find some yeah. stuff, I'll have some fun, I'll see exactly. what would an implosion sound like if you could hear it in space. And then, of course, you realise that's all made up anyway. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there is always an artistic licence on everything. And and, uh, some of the stuff, you know, the editors that I've worked with in the past, you know, as you say, some very bizarre sounding uh, uh, situations. Very. And you think, God, that's genius. (laughs) Oh, that's brilliant. There's always somebody being sucked into a vortex somewhere, you know, and and, uh, the old reverse reverb is always good (laughs) on that sort of thing, you know. But... um, And then uh, my favourite one is when you've got a really bad guy ghost type character and what you do is you've done all the processing to the voice that's kind of spooky and echoey but then you take the front of the first word oh, reverse, reverse it, it and then play it up fade into the such so you get that yeah, sort of sound that is oh, my absolute favorite it takes forever to do it but, know, but oh, especially fantastic. if someone's got like a hundred lines what's the technical <laughs> phrase for that is that reverse reverb i suppose it is reverse reverb because that's all you're yeah. in effect to do it you know? I just I, I wish I knew I mean it's terrible I've been doing the, the directing probably for about 13 years now mm. and there's still little technical things like no, what do you call that what do you call that you know that bit when you kind of go you go I've well, actually, no idea when I first learned to do it back at sound engineering college back in 93 I think it was we didn't have the digital stuff I mean there was digital stuff for music called Cubase mm. but it didn't have that kind of technology so we literally I, I remember one of my tutors saying we know you want to work in radio not music so is there something we can teach you that would be helpful and I said well stuff to do with tape would be very helpful because we're still editing on tape so he had a thing and he goes okay what I can teach you might be useful for audio is what we do sometimes with music particularly with drums which is reverse reverb and so he said right let's get a, we'll get the drummer in we'll do some drumming we'll record it and then we'll uh, using multi-track we'll then loop it we'll add some yeah. reverb and then what we do is we then take the reverb track record it to a simple two-track tape Good and Lord. then cut it reverse it time it back in, play it back in, and then with the faders, you obviously fade it in. And fade. Now, that was back in the day we did everything by hand, physically. That's and that's all you're kind of doing digitally now. But mm-hmm. we sat there over about three or four hours and just understanding the timing of the using the yeah. reverb, where to put it, how even to put it. If you oh, go, it go back, I mean, even you, you go back to Radiophonic workshop, yeah. workshop, you go back to Delia Darby show and you see how they Such slowed geniuses. things, they slowed up, yeah. they, they used, you know, twangs and bangs. And yeah. I find the whole thing absolutely fascinating I it, really and, it, do. and it is because you, I can go off on so many tangents to do with Delia Derbyshire in the Radiophonic Workshop because one of my loves is, is Music Concrete and, and they were the creators of Music Concrete in, in the same way that, that, you know, that John Cage and Schopenhauer oh, are, yes, are so regaled for what they did yeah. but actually a lot of the uh, so a lot of the techniques were created and by Stockhausen Delia and, and, and Stockhausen and, and, and so Interestingly forth. Toby Robinson used to work for Stockhausen so there we go nice link there What are you going to do? What now we've been talking for a long time. Um, I think I need to ask you a silly question because it is meant to be silly. I go on. Um, <laughs> and I can't think of a really good silly question to ask you other than um, audiobooks. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, you say so you 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 narrate an awful lot of audiobooks. A uh, few. Uh, yeah. yeah is that, you don't know. <laughs> so, um, what's your least favourite aspect of working with audiobooks? <clears throat> Can I just say? that my audiobook experience has still always been in the Doctor Who world and every single doctor (laughs) that Bernice Summerfield is partnered with is Scottish. Uh, Although Sylvester (gasps) McCoy might contest that slightly, um, it is actually, especially when you're doing uh, known voices, (laughs) there is always some bright spark going, well, that was useless. (laughs) Or, Or you think, or, or, or they're very flattering, but it, it is, it's a terrifying prospect yeah, having to yeah. do, and, and I hesitate to use the word because it's very overused, these <laughs> iconic characters. Well, of course. Yeah. Who people have so much yeah, affection for, and course. you're doing a whole audio book, and people going, I'm not there, this is rubbish. <laughs> so what on. is your favourite accent to do then? Well, I, I don't know. Weirdly, I, my I default. Yeah, what, weirdly, my default is northern, mm. and I have no northern connections but you're not northern. whatsoever. No, it's West Country. I'm my, my thing. But I tell you, the mm. one I do enjoy, and I've used it a number of times, is Norfolk, because it's ah, completely okay. different so, and very flat. So how te- 
let's have a little teaching session. How do you do Norfolk that's different from West Country? It's, it's completely different. There's no hard R's. Yeah. So are you all right there? So are you As going, opposed to how are you going along? the are you, set. Are you all right there? Right, you go. Roo. And the R's only happen in the in West Country. Uh, the R's only happen when there's a word with an R in it. But also, oh. but there's also an interesting uh, definition uh, 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 split between Somerset and Devon, uh, because Devon is a much flatter accent. Because if you say in in Somerset, "How are you today?" Mm -hmm. In Devon, it'd be, how are you today? And in Norfolk? How are you today? She's a genius. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Everybody will now be going, she's, what is that? She's It'll be better than some of those up. YouTube videos on accents. <laughs> <laughs> That's some really oh my dodgy God. stuff Some of those there. American ones. Have you seen the coffee? <laughs> genius. <one? laughs> I'm not actually, I, I, I'm assuming that they actually are doing them as a joke. Now. No, there is a woman. I, I must send you the link for this. There is, there, is a, there is a corker. We should do one. We should create for the channel. Uh, uh, a uh, how to do accents with everyone who comes here I'll get oh, them to no. do their accents and we'll add oh, it together okay. I mean it, the, the <laughs> thing is with accents ultimately uh, uh, you, if you need something that's more accurate than all these you go away you get a tape from the BBC yeah. and you listen to it and listen to it yeah. and listen to it because it's like music it's like absolutely. Anything. there are things I can't do I'm no. useless at Geordie can't do Geordie. It's a very hard one. <laughs> but you see, this is the good thing about the way that audio drama has developed over the years and audio books and everything is yeah. that you meet so many different people in different things and everybody will swap ideas. Absolutely. You say, look, I'm looking for an X, Y, Z and yeah. I know just the person to go to. And interesting, mm -hmm. as, as this industry in the UK is expanding rapidly, mm. What's been nice is that whilst there's now more job opportunities for a wider range of people, but we are all still involved with each other. And so, yeah, OK, we're fighting for work like everyone does in small cottage industries, but we're also mm. supporting each other. So, yeah. you know, uh, uh, if I get offered a job and I can't do it because I'm busy on, I'm very happy to forward you know, yeah. your details or Martin's details or, or Dirk's yeah. details and suggest, oh, well, they'll be great for that yeah. and vice versa. And then we're also doing the same with, oh, I just worked with such and such on this yeah. and they were a great actor, sound designer, yeah, composer. Exactly. And it's nice to we're not trying to keep it like a club we're trying no. to say if there's someone new who should join the club i mean in, 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 in a way we are spoiled for choice i mean it's yeah. always it's all with an overcrowded industry it's always going to be yeah. there's know, not enough commissions market, and titles no. for all Everybody. the people we would love to give work to there is and, and i suppose i should and i'm going to use one of those management terms uh, -oh. uh we should address a sort of elephant in the room uh and uh, uh, yes, <laughs> it's not you. um in that it, it's, it's very difficult, especially with Doctor Who, is that a, there are a lot of people, especially with um, social media now and mm -hmm. YouTube, and they do voices. Yes, and, and very well And sometimes. very well, yeah. but I would still say that there is a gulf of difference between doing voices and being an actor. Yes. Because you can do voices, okay, yeah. you can do brilliant voices, but when it comes to actually interacting, yeah. to responding, yeah. to have an emotional connection Absolutely. with a character and the writing and interpret what's on the page, it is very, very different. Well, I suppose there's a difference between um, being a character and, and or just in, voicing a cartoon character. Yes, imitating almost. a character. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it, it's always going to be a, a thing where you say, oh, I've got a friend who does this. Can yeah. they do that? That And yeah. you go, I'd love to, but I know a lot of actors who are out of work who <laughs> yes. really need the work. Who or or the sons to, you know. or daughters of the original person yeah. who can do the perfect impersonation yeah. of and them I, already. I, yes, or my, 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 my brother's got a fantastic voice. I think he should get into, oh, uh, well. you know, I, we have a few of that. Not, that. not Doctor Who related at all. That's the bane of audiobook producing. It's like, oh, I think I could do that. And yeah, you go, I've got well, really you might be voice. able to, but I've already got 10,000 people who, well, who do exactly. do it. And you always feel terribly bad because you yeah. don't want to dampen people's enthusiasm enthusiasm or fun I or would also, miss out on brilliant new talents but I would also argue that that people can do their own thing I mean in yeah. fact I've supplied a couple of voices a few years ago to kind of a couple of amateur mm -hmm. um, projects just for a bit of fun um, I've sort of knocked that on the head because it suddenly got I suddenly got a lot of <laughs> yeah, requests yeah, and it, it yeah, wasn't kind of taking it on, on old garage band on yeah, your computer yeah, yeah. you know but um, yeah, it, it, I mean, it is a tricky one because you want people mm. to have fun and have a great time. Yeah, but absolutely. at the end of the day, we're a professional outfit yeah. who use actors. Yeah. But as you say, we, we take recommendations, you know. Um, absolutely. And if you talent will come through. Mm. We will. We. I know I've always when casting, I, I've always tried to balance the famous, the well-known, yes, I hate to use the term, the marketable yes, name, absolutely. face, voice. 
and then say, well, because I've got X and Y, I can now go, oh, I'll have those three people who maybe have only done one thing before, yeah. but I like how I hear them. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I, and I also think they'll they'll blend yeah. nicely. With and the, it's exciting for them to work with people they never thought they'd ever yeah. work with. I mean, I do it. Sorry, yeah. touching my microphone. That's how right. unprofessional. I did it earlier. <laughs> um, you know, even, even I pinch myself sometimes oh. about, you know, gosh, I've just directed X, Y, or Z. Well, this yeah. is going to be my last question, which actually goes back to what you are saying about doing Bernice for so long. Um, now, is that... You've worked with and you've had in your adventures, a, a, what's the right word, a panoply of some of the most incredibly talented actors from around the world, obviously great British actors, but yeah. you know people that, that are known stateside and mm. everywhere. And it's the sort of thing you can't do in movies. Mm, and exactly. you, you, they're starting to do in telly. Mm. It's almost like the Netflixes, the Game of Throneses have starting to catch up with what you guys have been doing and we've been doing in BBC Radio Drama and the occasional indie production for years True. which is bizarre because it costs them millions mm. and we do it on Tuppence and Tapity. Mm. but I think it's because there's a genuine love of it's almost like going back to your theatre roots oh you're paying me enough to just for me to justify saying yes to your production but generally you're just saying come and have fun come and have fun and, and i've never found a, the most famous name ever to not at least consider it exactly if it's normally scheduling yeah. or a slightly unfortunate agent awesome. um, yeah. well, oh, <laughs> which you know is a whole other thing yeah it is a whole which other is fair thing. enough yeah. but otherwise as you just said, I've had the opportunity to work with the most incredible people who I would fanboy over forever <laughs> if I weren't putting Mr. Professional hat on. I'll still do it at the end of the session. Yes, of course. But, you know, you get through the job and you sit there afterwards. You look at the photos or you look at your cast sheet. Uh, at the end of the day, they've all gone. And you go, oh, my God, I've just been in a room. Look, how much would a movie cost oh, yes. to make with, with that, that group? With that person, I know. It's I astonishing, know. isn't it? It, 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 is, it is seems to be the power of I think of even at one point, uh, a few, quite a few years ago with Big Finish, when they were getting the most ex astonishing cast through, yeah. that even, even BBC, the BBC production <laughs> television vision were going, how do you, we can't get those no, casts no, for telly. No. How can you get those casts? You go, well, it's only one day. Well, there know. is the joy of it's quick, it's fast. You don't have to get made up. You don't need, no. you know, it's you just turn up, do lines, it, go yeah. home. Which is the lovely part of it, isn't it? it? Is. I, mean, I mean, it's very interesting. Um, over the years, obviously, I've met a lot of actors. I, I do spotlight photographs and, and some of them, uh, over the years, you'll get somebody who turns up for spotlight pics and, and, they'll, and they go very quiet. And then they'll say, actually, I... I know you're not just a photographer. <laughs> and you say, why? And they go, you're Bernie Summerfield, aren't you? And I go, yeah. And anyway, and it, then it turns out that they have great interest. I mean, it, oh, it, there's always going to be brilliant. this crossover between fans, uh, uh, yes. actors who are fans. Yes. And, and, you know, I've, I used to do a lot of the Blake Seven um, of uh, productions. Yeah. And invariably people go, I really like Blake Seven. Can you get me in? <laughs> and I go, there's a fantastically good actor who, who I'd always been a fan of, beautiful voice. Um, and I got him in, I think it was to play Avon's brother. Oh, very And nice. he sounded so like him. And it's, he was a huge fan. He was very quiet for most of the day. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I think he was just taking in the surreality <laughs> yes, I'm here. of working with their heroes. And it happens, you know, with, with Tom oh, Baker oh, and with uh, Peter I, I, and, well, I, I, whoever's it, doctor yeah. it was at the time. I, I still can't remember how I coped when that first, working first with Tom Baker on, on the... On the um, Nest Cottage series because oh, cool. you know yes. it was I know he'd done a couple of little other bits with the B but it was officially his first time back as the fourth doctor yeah. under the BBC oh, yeah, for I like 28 years yeah. or something and you're sitting there waiting and you know he's about to come in and you you are professional but he's your doctor mm. and it's like ah oh. It is. <laughs> and someone had someone bizarrely but brilliantly had bought a bag of jelly babies oh, and put them on the desk and I'm thinking should we leave them there is that a one step too far but of course he turns up he's amazing he puts on the show mm. and it is great but you very quick have to switch your fanboy off and go right yeah. I've got a job to do the how amount... do I direct that person yeah exactly the <laughs> amount the amount of... Sorry, that must be a job but the amount of people who said if you told my eight 10, 12 year old oh. self that I would be here doing this yeah. with that person. Yeah. I would never have believed I purposely you. do that. Um, you know, running, a, running studios as I do um, is very stressful because uh, you're not just being a producer for a day or an editor, you know, you're, you're running your business. And one of the hardest parts of running two studios, and I don't know how people who have eight or 10 managers, mm. is, although they have a, a administrative staff, is you're chasing the work 
you're then doing the work, you're delivering the work whilst you're still chasing the work. Yeah, and it's it never, there's never ending thing. Yeah. And you're stressed and you're stressed and you're stressed. And, and I have those bad days and I, I, I will purposely stop. And I say two things to myself. One thing is, look who you're working with. <laughs> <laughs> look at those photos. Listen to that audio you've made. Yeah. Can you believe that, you know, you've got a rather naughty outtake of Tom Baker saying that you're a fabulous guy to go to go cottaging with, <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> um, why he said it, I have no idea, but that's Tom. Um, yeah. <laughs> and the other thing is that, you know, as many people who, who watch this and know me know when my best friend died many years ago, I also say to myself, Pete would be expensive exploding with joy yeah. at this just I, I i kind of wish he were here to enjoy it of course but mm. I, I and so that reminds me that i don't think in any other part of our industry as media as a whole we would get such a wide opportunity to work with so also, many wonderful it's people a, it's a very intimate process yes it's not it's, you're not on a, a massive set with thousands of technicians yeah. and having to worry about the light and the this and the that you are in a very close yeah. one-to-one -one position yeah. and and you can have a, a proper discussion about Absolutely. whether the, the reading the performance or the voice whatever but 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 you're there creating something with your favorite actors yeah. telling yeah. a story and also i mean even uh, over the years meeting at, at various conventions meeting people who buy audios not just from this country or america no, but i have to I say know. it's worldwide yeah. i cannot get over people listening to audio drama in their second third fourth language it's astonishing, it when, astonishing. You, when you hear from them i mean if initially you kind of think oh it must be like place like Canada and Australia, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, and Australia is a, a fascinating place for who anyway. But uh, but then yes, you're Russia, right. you, you get South Russia, Korea, Brazil, and Japan's now starting yes. to really build a market for for all English based audio drama. Um, Storytel uh, oh, yes, is a great Swedish, company coming out of Sweden yeah. and and the, and the Netherlands yes. region um, who do obviously their own languages, but have a big big back collection of, of British made audio drama and audio books and it sells people want this yes. stuff and what's so exciting is is that we have the world's library to look at and yeah. either to adapt or, or original stories and and that that potential yeah. for the enormity of the storytelling absolutely is I think fantastic. it's something we haven't yet tapped into properly because there are the complexities of publishing deals and language rights and Musical when you start bringing in translators like, it yes. gets even more complex yes, of course. but there is a world of of material out there and I'll, I, you know, I give audible props for many things mm, yeah. one of the first things they did with their audio originals was to tap into the existing um, German radio drama market wow. and start working with some of the stuff they've already been doing over yeah, there and yeah. so a few of their first projects were adaptations of what had already been done mm -hmm. and we wouldn't have got that stuff yeah. otherwise and there's been a push towards uh, a couple of years ago there was a big push uh, introducing Indian material wow. uh, English language Indian books yeah. because again Audible and Amazon pushed into that market set mm -hmm. up an office mm -hmm. there uh, set up a direct shop online mm -hmm. shop and but a lot of it was recorded and produced in the UK but and I it was fascinating I think you've stuff. hit the nail on the head there in that downloads have changed the game yeah I mean the the possibility that somebody can go into a computer in I don't know Papua yeah. New Guinea yeah. and 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 pick up a, a an audio yeah. book from you know and, and, London and mobile phones and the so, fact that you don't uh, yes. need a dedicated device for your audio no. books it's no, just exactly. on your mobile phone it is extraordinary. the only downside to that is with kids material I think because yeah. no one has yet I don't know why um, people like Audible and Amazon are presumably working on this but why since you can have YouTube kids app why there's not say like an Audible kids, kids app, app which would be linked idea. to the parents uh, mm. account but would have there no is, ability to purchase anything there is an app and I don't know whether it's still going and I cannot remember what it's called that is specifically from children's stories mm. from around the world yes. being told directly it was it is actually video of each person from that oh, country telling oh, the story sweet. and you can pick it's an interactive thing so it's not wow. just a straight thing it's yeah. an interactive thing where you, you press on it you see some illustrations you see the person yeah. telling nice. you the story nice. and and in and think I think there was one where you could actually decide the ending but oh, there's wow. so many possibilities I tell you what I have done recently um, for Fox Yeson music is that it was the fighting fantasy <gasps> Fighting fantasy oh, novels no. on audio, and they have got a bit of software. I want to produce those. <laughs> so you're too late. <laughs> they're, they're, they're in they're in very early stages. My 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 partner and my myself were playing parts in it, oh. and I think there is. You've got a sale. 
they, they, they've uh, got a bit of software that will ultimately allow you to use that interactive element to choose with, your own adventure. To choose your own oh, adventure. See, I, I've been talking to various people about that for years, but I didn't know where the license was being held. Oh, so well, it was like, ah, yeah, I'm so, so glad they're doing it yes, because it was are. one of those things of you must be able to do a choose your own adventure in audio. You yeah. just need a dedicated app, of course, yes, to, is, to, yeah. to function. And it, I, I, I'm not quite sure what, what form it takes, but certainly I talked to Richard Fox, who, who's doing them, and he said, yes, no, it's, it's been yeah. glad that we've got it all getting Remember, sorted. Remember, tell him next time, know. we'll record them at Labbrook. <laughs> right, we've been talking for far too long. Far too Thank long. you for joining us. Thank this is really. Lisa Bowerman. If you need a narrator, <laughs> uh, a director, um, or just basically a lovely person who knows everything about audio and the audio world, and been there, done it, and designed the T-shirt. Took the photograph of the T-shirt <laughs> and sold that on Getty Images or some, something. Like that. Uh, she is your lady. Um, uh, I've been Neil Gardner. You're very welcome to join us on the next episode of Talking Books when actually Darwin might say something. We're not sure. He's 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 a bit nervous. Oh, oh sorry, she's Darwin. She's killed the director. I'm bad with the props. I'm she's bad. Killed, oh no. Oh, I think we're going to have to leave now. No, I'm just going to do this because I've got to. Before. Well, you need a photo with you and Darwin, don't you? Come on in. So he's not going to speak with that, <laughs> with an off <laughs> accent. <laughs> Let's Sorry, call it quits there and say bye bye. <laughs>